Hi everyone! Having understood different single indicators to measure economic development and the limitations of them, let's now consider composite indicators, uh, different measures of development that encompass more than just one indicator. I'm going to focus in this video on the Human Development Index, which is internationally acclaimed and recognised as being the main way of measuring development. I'm also going to mention briefly uh, the Millennium Development Goals. I'm not going to make a video on the Millennium Development Goals, but it's worthwhile you knowing that as well, um, to use in your essay to make sure that you're aware that there are different ways of measuring progress. And whether countries are achieving Millennium Development Goals is another way to consider and measure progress. But I'm not going to focus on Millennium Development Goals at all. They're quite simple. You just need to know what the nine goals are and you'll be fine. All right, let's look at the Human Development Index then. An index that was um, developed by Marty Sen and another Pakistani-based economist. And what they tried to do was include as many important indicators of development as possible within one measure. So it is an index, it's calculated just like an index normally is calculated, but it constitutes three key things. Three key things here in green which are weighted equally. So they're just as important as each other. Equal weightings given to each three in this index. So what's actually measured? Well, longevity. Now, the key thing for you to realize is that these words at the top, longevity, knowledge, standards of living, yes, they're important to know, but what's more important is to understand how they are measured. So longevity, very simply, think of it as life expectancy at birth. That's measured. So there is a health indicator in there. There is an education measure in there. We're trying to measure knowledge. How is that measured? Well, adult literacy, adult literacy is used. School enrollment is used. Okay, so these are two measures of knowledge. Also, standard of living is actually measured too. And how is that measured? We use GDP per capita, PPP, to come up with a measure of standard of living. So together, these three things are calculated, they are put into this index, they're weighted equally, and given the actual uh, mathematical calculations involved, a figure is then generated, which is the Human Development Index for a given country. So, the numbers can range between 0 and 1. 1 representing, representing perfect development, based on Sen and Qureshi, the Pakistani economists' uh, interpretation of what perfect development is. Whereas 0 implies that development is just non-existent. There is absolutely zero development out there. They go one stage further, they break the numbers down to say between 0 to 0 0.49, low development, uh, between 0 0.5 to 0 0.69 is mean development, between 0 0.7 and 0 0.79 is high development, and anything uh, greater than or equal to 0 0.8 represents a very high development. So countries that achieve very high development are countries like the UK, Australia, Canada, Singapore, um, uh, Norway, um, Denmark, these are all countries that regularly feature uh, in the top 10 very high developed countries. Whereas in the very low developed country base, you tend to have your sub-Saharan African countries, uh, which dominate that, that bracket there. So, understanding what the HDI is, what it measures, how to interpret the numbers, we now need to think of why the HDI is a good measure of development. Here are the arguments why HDI is actually quite good, and in red the arguments why HDI maybe is not the best indicator in the world as well. So, what is beneficial by the HDI? Well, it's a broad measure. Look at what it's including. Not just one factor, uh, not just one uh, key area of development, but lots of different ones, three different ones. And these were all previously what we considered single indicators. Now we can bring them all together, and we get to one key measurement of development using the HDI, which is fantastic. So it's broad, and it still includes what we would consider a very important constitute, a very important factor of development, which is GDP per capita. Okay, so we find a way to bring all these different single indicators together to give us one number at the end. It focuses very importantly on development outcomes. Look at what we're actually measuring here. We're measuring adult literacy, school enrollment, life expectancy. These are all key development outcomes. To focus on these things, you could argue, is a major benefit. It allows for progress to be measured over time. So by giving you one figure, let's say, in a given year, you can then look in 10 years' time as to whether your HDI has improved or not. So it's very useful for comparison purposes, not just for your own country, but to compare with other countries too, to see where your development is actually matching other countries' development. 
And it means that uh, international bodies, international organizations, maybe like the World Bank, um, maybe like different you know, NGOs that may exist, can actually focus their attention now on countries with very low levels of development. The HDI gives us an idea of which countries are very lowly developed, and therefore maybe aid can be diverted to these countries that need it the most. So in that sense, allocating resources uh, becomes more efficient, knowing which countries need resources the most. However, the HDI does have its limitations. There is no mention of income distribution at all in this, even though Sen and Tadaro both argue that income inequality does need to be considered when we look at development. Uh, why are these three things weighted equally? For some countries, it may be argued that GDP per capita is far more significant as a driver of development. It may be argued that in some countries, the fact that education is so limited means that to actually focus on that is more important, so maybe that deserves a higher weighting. But the HDI doesn't consider that. All these three things are weighted equally. And you may argue that that's quite arbitrary, that's a bit random. Um, and what it means is that to then allocate resources to areas where we need the most becomes difficult. Within these three things, let's say the health um, sector in the economy is where development is really lacking. That's where many resources need to be allocated to. But the HDI doesn't tell us that it's health that's kind of dominating the lack of development. It doesn't give us that because these three things are weighted equally. So therefore the allocation of resources may not be as efficient as we would hope because we don't know exactly where the problems are actually lying. We don't know that maybe education is dominating the lack of development in a given country. Freedom of choice, both Sen and Tadara talk about that in the definition. Where is that measured in the HDI? It's not. Similarly, other factors like crime, like poverty levels, like corruption are all not included, like the costs of negative externalities are not included in the HDI. So you could argue, okay, it may be broad, but is it as broad as we would want it to be? Because we know development includes lots of different things. We're only still looking at three things. Yes, three very important things here, but still only three things. But a counter to this argument is that, well, maybe its selectivity here is what makes it such a renowned and acclaimed measure of development. The fact that the three most important pillars of development are being looked at here is maybe what makes it such a good measure. That's a good counter-argument to some of the uh, arguments against the HDI here. Okay. So the HDI, that is very much the big daddy of development measurement indicators. It's a composite indicator and that's why it's considered to be quite a good one. If you're studying A2, you might also need to know about the ISEW, which is a sustainable um, indicator of development that you can also revise in your own time. But the HDI is the most important. I hope that that makes sense. Uh, thank you very much. Keep this very clear in your head. And I'll see you all next time.